At exactly 8.09 last night, the protests suddenly went quiet. In memory of a student who fell to his death during a police operation last week. The silence ended with a now familiar chant. Liberate Hong Kong, revolution of our time. And then it was back to building their defences. An improvised catapult is manoeuvred into position. Broken bricks provide the ammunition. At Hong Kong Polytechnic University, protesters are turning their campus into a fortress. There are just so many levels to this barricade. If you look, there's what, two rows of office furniture there, essentially. The bricks that they put on the stairs, it looks like they poured oil on the steps as well. Then we've got these, these little bits of hose pipe with nails to prevent people coming in. The row of umbrellas up there, which presumably is to protect against the pepper spray and tear gas. And then if you look around you, every single entrance and exit to this campus has been blocked off and everybody coming in is being searched. How far are you prepared to go to defend your campus? Um, we have right knocks for our family already. What do you mean? Um, uh, if we lost our life and then that knocks will go to our family. You've, you've written a note to your family in case you die? I think most of us. Are you serious? Yes, of course. Does your family know about this? Yes. What do they say? Um, I have a very lucky family. They support me. But they must be terrified. Who are not? Everyone is terrified. Who are not? Is it really worth it? We think so. Why? Because this is our home. Hong Kong is our home. At campuses across the city, all classes are cancelled. Mind the glass. Universities have become the epicentre of this revolt. The protesters are overwhelmingly young, but they're not all students here. They're office workers, music teachers, even school children. Officials here and in Beijing say they're driving this city to the brink. Here's an improvised catapult. Police used live ammunition again this week, and the protesters' tactics are becoming more radical in response. This is a serious weapon that could kill someone. Are you prepared to risk killing a police officer mm. in defense of your cause? If they come, we just want to stop them. We are not going to kill anyone, but if someone wants to kill you, you need to fight against them. At PolyU, they're expecting a confrontation with police. They've seen it happen at other universities. No one knows how long the standoff might last, but in the canteen, they're preparing for the long haul, with everything you might need to hold out in the event of a siege. But people are on edge. Suddenly, there's a commotion. Some of the protesters have sealed off the canteen. Everyone is being frisked. Go back, go back, go back, go back. Hey, no. Go back, here's go back. back. Here's what's, here's what's, here's, go back. Sorry, they're just filming me. Here's what's going on. Maybe, maybe outside, maybe it's sorry, outside in the sure, sure, sure. Sorry, it's okay, no we're from the BBC. Here. I'm sorry, I'm okay. sorry, right. not here. Just, I'm sorry. Sure, maybe sure, outside. Sure. Okay, maybe sure. outside. Here's what's going on. They think there are four police infiltrators inside the canteen and they're looking for them. And tension is extremely They search, but they find no one. Either they got away or it's one of those rumours that goes viral over messaging apps. Outside, they're testing their catapults. Engineering students using the Department of Finance and Accounting for target practice. At one of the entrances, on a footbridge over the main highway, they keep watch all night. This confrontation, that began with opposition to an extradition agreement with Beijing, has grown into something much more fundamental. The protesters want something that the authorities will not give them, full democracy. And there seems no hope of a political solution.
I'm putting myself in the shoes of a police officer. If a box of those petrol bombs rains down on my head, I might be tempted to use real bullets to defend myself. Are you not worried about that? I believe every one of us is afraid of being shot by live rounds. If they want to fire live rounds, they will fire it anyway. What I'm asking you, I suppose, is are you worried about this situation escalating? Of course we are, but we have no choice. We think freedom is more valuable than our life. On the footbridge, the protesters are doing two things. They're holding one of the main entrances to the campus, but also they've closed off a major highway, a key artery into the city. What we're seeing now is a new tactic. Smashing toll booths, trying to paralyse the city to enforce a general strike. Why are you trying to stop the cars? Because maybe the police cars will come. Right. Are you also trying to stop people from getting to work in the city? Yeah. You are? Why? Because every, we are forcing everyone to participate. For the second night running, the protesters are waiting. For the police and for a fight in which they know they're the underdog. This is a nervous vacuum that becomes more dangerous as the hours tick by.